An American journalist in Ukraine has seen the Russian attacks escalate with her own eyes. Christina Pescucci had to flee Poland for her own safety, and she's in Krakow now where the sun is rising, and she joins us live with what she is seeing there. Christina, I imagine you have seen more than you ever could have ever imagined. Please give us uh, your thoughts as you sit there now. It's nice to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, the last week is kind of a, a blur, um, going on maybe 12 hours of sleep for the whole week. So trying to formulate my thoughts, but it's been very emotional. Um, my heart is still with the people of Ukraine, and I, I wish deeply that I could go back. Um, I came here with an organization called Children of War Foundation and kind of embedded with them, and they were providing life-saving surgeries for kids who had heart defects. And so seeing their bravery and selflessness um, and the need that still exists for people beyond what's happening from the atrocities of war, just the everyday struggles that people are already going through to survive was hugely impactful, uh, as well as the generosity of the people of Ukraine and just how much they wanted to give, even though they were going through so much. You know, there was a Ukrainian family in Lviv that invited me into their home for dinner because they were so proud of their culture and they wanted to share that and share how they were feeling and what they were thinking about. Um, and, and that was in spite of the fact that they're having supply chain issues and there are shelves on, uh, in the grocery stores that are empty. And still, they just were so incredibly generous and kind and, and think that will stay with me forever. Think about what, what you would like to let us know because we're you know, so, so far away and all we can depend on is the reports that we see. What would you like people to know here in this, in this country about what we can do as individuals and maybe even a little more about the Ukrainian people? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was really illuminating, a, a reminder of the importance of the free press uh, the resilience of people, I just, I'm blown away by, by what I saw. Um, you know, Lviv was relatively safe compared to the rest of the country, and that, that semblance of safety was shattered when all of a sudden there was that, that bombing um, hours after we fled. And then the week before, there was that other bombing that was maybe, you know, 40 miles outside of Lviv. So this one hit really close to home. And I had a translator that I was with while I was there. His girlfriend lived right near the side of the blast. And the air raid sirens would go off pretty much every morning when we were there around 3 a.m., 5 a.m. That's part of the reason it's, it's so hard to sleep. And um, his girlfriend had to go into the inner hallway. They call it a two-wall rule because the exterior wall is the one that takes the brunt of the blast. The interior wall will be more fragmented, so it's uh, somewhat protective compared to uh, a little less compared to a bomb shelter, but it's all that she had. And, and thankfully, she was okay. But I would just say, um, no matter what position you're in, you always can be in a position to help others, to be kind. And that is what people there were doing, just stepping up to help one another, even civilians training to fight the Russians should the Russian troops come to their city because they wanted to be hand in hand helping one another. And I, I just, I wish that we could all emulate and absorb that, that spirit um, and generosity and kindness when we approach one another in our daily lives. Tina, I know it's dangerous for journalists as well, and we are so glad that you are safe and able to give us your viewpoint, and uh, thank you so much. And we have many stories of San Diegans who are stepping forward and many ways that people can help that we're gonna share throughout the newscast. So Christina, stay safe, thank you so much, and we will check back with you soon.